It is indeed quite possible to be too supportive of someone. If you're constantly supporting them when they're wrong, I mean, that can build quite an unhealthy mindset in that person. We just have to look at Trump for a good example of this. Sure, a number of people are trying to call Trump out, but to Trump, those are just the enemies, and you don't listen to your enemies. But the people who are supposedly in support of Trump never call him out, so he just listens to the constant support and praise, right? Out of all the messed up things about the way that I was raised, from being scared of making mistakes, to having this extreme form of perfectionism, and I wasn't taught basic life skills, and I had to learn most of my ethics and morals from public schools and television, and in some cases, some of the messed up churches I went to, one of the biggest disservices to my upbringing was that any time that I did something wrong outside the house, outside the home, uh, when I'm out and about in the world, and I would talk about it at home, I was always given full support as if nothing I did was wrong. I was constantly given the notion that I'll always make the right decisions, that I am a good person no matter what I do. I mean, now I understand uh, parents want to be supportive, and, and, and that's cool, but there are some sides to that that can be negative. When I did something for obviously the wrong reasons, I was pretty much told that I was always righteous. Those important discussions about ethics and morals never occurred. At the time, as far as I was concerned, everyone should just love me for being me. I got told that if things are difficult, we'll just quit. It's their problem. It's not your problem. Move on to better things. The Dunning-Kruger effect was in full force with me. In fact, I'd say it was still in full force all the way up until 2010, which is where it first started to dissipate. Then I suppose I could go into a long story of how that happened, but I'll... I, I guess I'll leave that for another video or for some other time in some other whatever. But it actually took until the end of 2017 for me to finally start truly taking the steps to get out of that sort of thing. Now, before August 13th, 2013 at 8.50 p.m., when I had a major realization that allowed me to mostly step away from the clutches of organized religion, where I could finally start analyzing myself logically and rationally. Yeah, before that time, the primary thing that would tell me that I'm wrong or, or bad or unethical were the leftovers of religious teachings, where I always had this massive feeling of guilt no matter what I did. This obviously wasn't very helpful. I still have waves of guilt to this day. Religion really did a number on me, and I've seen that it's done a number on a lot of people, which is why I kind of preach against organized religion so much. I mean, yeah, there's some people that it works all right for, but there's lots of others it doesn't work so well for. And, you know, as I've said before, I think it's messed up to teach a kid that their own thoughts will make them burn in hell for eternity. I, I, I think that's... I personally think that's a form of child abuse. But, you know, to this day, every time I feel this strange sense of guilt, I have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out whether I actually did anything wrong, or whether it's just leftovers of religion again, or whether I'm just going against the dogma that gets taught by, you know, critical theory, feminism, and sociology teachings. It's still sometimes quite a challenge. I am most certainly not a perfect person. I don't even know whether there's such a thing as a perfect person. I don't even know whether I can make the definitive statement that I'm a good person. I'm just a person trying to do my best based on what I know. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm hopefully learning from my mistakes. And there are still a lot of things I could be far more humble about. We're all a work in progress. Guess I don't know what more to say. Thanks for watching.